All right, so we're on, um, um, we got, we, yesterday we we're talking about the kosher animals. And we we're talking about the idea of, uh, 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 we, we talked about the symbolism of, uh, of, the symbolism of, of the split hooves in the, in, in, in the cut. Now, if you look at Perak Yudal of Pasuk Dalit, um, so there are three animals here that are mentioned. We said yesterday there's the camel, there, the camel and the, uh, the, what do you call it, the camel and the, and the chazir. We said that there's also the arneves, which is the, a, a hare or a, uh, a, what do you call it, or a, what's it called, a hare or a, a rabbit. And the Mepharshim say, very interesting here. There's an interesting comment. There's a medrash. The medrash compares the Jewish people are a seh. We're a sheep. Then everybody knows we're the sheep among the wolves with the shepherd watching over us, the, 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 the sheep among 70, 70 wolves. The, 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 the Yishmaelites are compared to the camel. The Yishmaelites are the camel. And Esav is who? The Chazir. Yechar Semena Chazir Miyar. Esav is compared to the Chazir. The Yishmael is compared to the camel. And, uh, and what do you call it? The, uh, the, the, uh, so, so I saw one of the first. Uh, first of all, the plain meaning, by the way, those of you who have joined in on Torah Anytime or uh, uh, YouTube, uh, these are the Pesach Haggadah rhymes, uh, which are for sale. If anybody's interested, I can pay it my PayPal. Uh, account by PayPal at David B. Kaplan. That's my Gmail account. David B. is in baseball, basketball, badminton, busted bridges in Baltimore. David B. Kaplan, K A P L A N. These are Haggadah rhymes, uh, which are uh, suitable for the Seder and it keeps everybody interested, even, even the adults. So if anybody's interested, you can contact me for that. Here, that's yours. The, uh, the what do you call it? So the, 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 the commentaries say that, that Clydesdale is a sheep. Yishmael is a camel, and Esav is a chazer, Esav is the pig. Now, the plain understanding of why Esav is the chazer is the only animal that has the external kosher sign of split hooves, and internally, he's not kosher. And that's classic Esav. Classic Esav is that he shows himself to be kosher, and on the inside, he's no good. And we find that twice in the Torah. Where do we find that in the Torah? When Yaakov deceives Esav and he goes on the run, the Torah says, Vayomer Esav belibo. Esav says in his heart, when my father dies, I'm going to get this guy. It's internal, the no good. On the outside, he's all smiley. He's, everything is good. He's Esav. On the outside, he's fine. And on the inside, he's no good. He's planning, he's plotting to kill Yaakov. And we find it again, and we just had it, gentlemen. Where was it? Where do we find it? We just had it recently. Vayomer Haman belibo. Haman. Haman is the, the arch descendant of Esav. I'm Amalek. Amalek is the first son, is the son of Esav's firstborn. Esav has a firstborn son. What's his name? Uh, uh, um, uh, uh, what's his name? Esav uh, has a son. Um, oh, no. What's Esav's son? Esav has a son, and his first son, his, his son is his son. Eliphaz. Eliphaz is Esav's son. Thank you. And uh, uh, Elifa is Esau's son, and he has a son as Amalek, the arch nemesis of Klai Israel. And it, not coincidentally, twice we see Vayomer Belibo, somebody spoke in their heart. Vayomer Esau Belibo, he was plotting. Vayomer Haman Belibo, Haman is plotting, and he's talking, uh, he's talking on the outside like he's for the good of what the king wants, and really inside he's thinking the king has me in mind. So the Chazir represents Esau. But I saw one of the, cam one of the commentaries says that the camel represents the past. Why does a camel represent the past? The camel stores up a lot of stuff in its, uh, the camel stores up a lot of uh, the humps of the camel, right? Get, that carries all his liquid and all the, what do you call it? A camel could go for, for, for a long time without, without, what do you call it? Without any sort of, any sort of uh, 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 re, 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 refueling himself. He is stored up from the past, which apparently that is an indication that camels, there's also something else, one other reason why I symbolize the past. Yishmael has tradition. They have very rich tradition that goes to the past. The, the, the Muslims are very much focused on their past. They have their, they have their what do you call it? They have the, you know, what they have, the, 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 the Islam or the, what do you call it, the Koran, and they're very, they, they, they maintain all their traditions. Esav is the future. You look at Europe, you look at uh, 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 the culture, Greek culture, 
the idea of we're advancing, mankind technology, we're advancing, we're going towards the future. And that they look at the future as, you know, everything, we're, we're more advanced than previous generations. Whereas Yaakov, which is the se, the sheep, we're both. We're both. We're the past and we're the future because we know that we have a Mesorah. We have a tradition. We're doing the same thing that was done 2,000 years ago. We have the same Havdalah candles and we have the same Kiddush cups and we have the same tefillin, yet we're focused on the future. We have the future in, is making ourselves better people constantly growing and the future in Olam Haba. So that's the, the symbolism of the three animals. Now, if you take a look in Pasuk Vav, the Esar Nevis, this is also a non-kosher animal, five lines on the top. <coughs> Everybody should take a chumash. They really should have, besides the coffee machine, they should really have a, uh, they should have a liquor locker over there. You know, <laughs> no, you never know when somebody needs a shot to get going. You know, you should have something at least. You know, not, I would not beer, not beer, but at least you know something. You're right? Am I right or wrong? Yeah, too many people will get going. You know? Yeah, well, I, that's okay. We'll get going. Right? When the going gets tough, the tough get going. Right? So, uh, I mean, what happens when a rabbi has coughing? You know, so sometimes you need some, some, some natural antibiotics. You know, well, well, what the heck? All right, so he says, Ves ar neves ki malas gerahi. The ar neves. Again, I think they translate it. Yeah, don't you guys know anything about animals? There's a rabbit, a hare. Uh, uh, some other sort of uh, rabbit type creature, whatever. It is. I don't know if it's a rabbit. Uh, uh, well, like, well, like one of those. We'll say yes, you know, uh, just because none of us know. But uh, the Arnevis, so, so it's called an Arnevis. Now, it's a very interesting, and the Gemara in Megillah says that at one point, King Talmai, now he's in, in, in our translations, he's, he's written as Ptolemy, but I think you, draw, you don't pronounce the P. Ptolemy, right? How do you pronounce it? Ptolemy. Ptolemy, Ptolemy, but there's a P there, like psychology, right, or, 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 or like physical education, you know, there's a, P, there, there's a P there which you drop. Now he was, he at one point took 72 sages and he put them in individual rooms. No one knew that he didn't, neither, none knew that the others were doing. And he told them, translate the Torah for me in Greek. And what they did was, because he wanted to see about the accuracy of the Torah, and what they did was they made certain changes in the translation. All 72 of them were spot on on the changes. They had Ruach HaKodesh to make the changes. So, for example, it doesn't say Bereshis Bar Elokim, because it sounds Bereshis Bar Elokim. They didn't tra translate it as Bereshis Bar Elokim, because it sounds like Bereshis created God. And then he'd come along and say, no, there's another God here called Bereshis. So they changed the order. One of the things that they changed, instead of our nevis, all 72 of them wrote Tsiiras Raglayim. Tsiiras Raglayim means like the, the fleet of foot or the young, young, young footed animal. Why? Because his wife's name was Arnevis. And he was worried that if they'd write the word Arnevis, so he'd say, The Jews are making fun of my wife. You don't mess with a king's wife. So he, so they changed, in all 72 of them, the Gemara says, they all had Ruach HaKodesh independently, because they didn't know, he just said translate the Torah. And each one of them made these, it was a series of logical changes. The Gemara in, in, in Megillah and Daf Tess says that each one made these changes, about 10 changes that each one made in their translation of the Torah, because otherwise he'd come back with complaints. And each one of them, they made the exact same changes. And one of the changes was this Arnevis, that they left out the word Arnevis, because that was her name. It's like if you translate it in, if you translate it, uh, uh, what do you call it, some legal document, you wouldn't, you wouldn't write the word Hillary, right? You know, you know because <laughs> yeah, 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 you, you, would, you would put in some other, some other translation. Uh, you, you, you put something, I don't want to say what, but you'd put in something else. Okay, take a look at Pasuk, uh, Pasuk now this is fascinating. In Pasuk Zion, Ve'es ha'chazir, Kimafris parsa who he's got split hose the shosa shesa parsa who vigera lo igor he does not chew his cud tomei hulachem it is impure now take a look at that word chazir is there any any Hebrew word that the word chazir reminds page five ninety eight <laughs> look at the word chazir carefully what what the, what what's the root of the word chazir which is what like to, review. to review very good to review chazir 
So I saw one of the commentaries says, a pig does not have, he got it, yeah, I nailed that one. <laughs> a pig does not have, a pig does not have a neck. Right, just kind of goes from, this guy's gonna go from, you know, it's just all one thing until you get to the head. And, and uh, uh, there was a baseball player named no, no, no Neck Williams, Walt Williams, they call, he played for the White Sox, so you know, we won't talk about him too much, but he was, uh, they call him No Neck. Uh, Walter No Neck Williams. When I was a little kid, he was a little kid, they called him No Neck. Because it just went kind of from shoulders to ears. You know, there, 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 just, there was just nothing there. There was, there, there was nothing. The guy was, he was about 5'5", five, five, and he just looked like a, he just like a small Jeep. That's what he looked like, you know, with, with, with No Neck. They called him No Neck Williams. He was, he was actually a decent hitter. So, so the, the Chazir is called Chazir because in order to look back, what does he have to do? He's got to turn his whole body around. It's from the word chozer. Chozer. He can't go like this and look behind his shoulder. For a, a for a chaz, for any animal, if you want to see if something's chasing you, just kind of look back. But for a chazir, what's he got to do? He's got to really change his whole body, turn his whole body back. Number one, what is that represent? Who did we say is the chazir? Asav. What doesn't Asav do? They don't look back in their tradition. They're always look, they're only looking at it. For him to look back is a major effort. Whereas for us, to look back, we understand that we have a tradition. Remember I told you the story of Rabbi Yankov Kamenetsky on the play. It's a very famous story if you haven't heard it. It's, a, it's, it's one of the most commonly repeated stories. Yaakov Kamenetsky, that's all, was sitting on an airplane next to an anthropologist, uh, an evolutionist anthropologist. And he was sitting on the plane and as the flight, flight progressed, he was, his, son, his son came over and said, Tati, do you need some food? Do you need anything? And his granddaughter was on the plane. She came over, do you need a blanket? Do you need something? They kept, they were all over him. And finally, at a certain point, this anthropologist, an older man, he said to Rebecca Kamenetsky, you know, my grandchildren barely talk to me. My kids, once in a while, they ask for money. You know, nobody, you know, they, they're not even, they don't even think, and you, they're all over you. What's going on? What's the difference between you and me? So Kamenetsky said, look, we believe in Torah Judaism that there was an, ama an event in history, the single most important event in history was called the giving of the Torah at Har Sinai. And my children look at me, that was the power source. That was what energizes us spiritually. And my children look at me and they say, you're one generation closer to the source than I am. So they look up to me as being on a higher level. My son looks up at me as being on a higher level. My grandchildren certainly look up at me at a higher level. And therefore they treat me with that kind of respect because they feel that I'm, on, I'm closer to the source. You, however, are an evolutionist. You know, you believe that man came from gorillas. So you look at, you look back and you see your two kids look at you and say, well, you're one generation closer to being an ape, right? Uh, you know, we're, we're more advanced than you are. You know, so what, why, why should we respect you? And that's very much, without getting into evolution and, 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 and that sort of thing, but just in general, they believe mankind is advancing. Man, the progress, we have to make progress. You know, not one of them ever in any article that I've read or any interview where they talk about, to make, let's make America great again. Let's, we have to make progress in America. Not once has anybody ever said around, progressing towards what? Progr what are you progressing towards? What are you, what are you advancing towards? You're advancing towards oblivion. You made, what's that drug in, in Oregon that they made legal? Uh, that, that drug that people keep killing themselves with. What's it called? Fentanyl. Fentanyl. You know, oh, that's, a, that's progress. Uh, yeah, you're advancing towards the grave. Good, you know, you're, you're pregnant, but you never bothered to define it. But ace of that's the attitude, technology, movement, going in a certain direction. Well, got news for you. The, 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 the ace of the world, the ace of the world, look back at the previous generation, you're a bunch of dinosaurs. I remember sitting, I remember a guy sitting, I remember sitting in front of a computer, and I'm not, I'm no technological, uh, I was going to say technological whiz, but I'm no technological anything. But I remember sitting in front of a computer, a guy turns it on, and we waited about 10 seconds, and he got frustrated. It's a dinosaur. And yeah, 10, 10 seconds, you know, 10 seconds, your grandparents would have been happy to do so, anything in 10 seconds. And, and uh, you, you know, and, and your, your grandparents, certainly your great-grandparents, if they ever made a trip, they went by ship. When they, in the 1930s, if you went to Israel, you went by ship, you said goodbye to your family and never saw them again. And if you did, it was one more time in the course of a lifetime. For us, to fly from Israel to New York takes nine and a half, sometimes I've been on a flight nine and a half hours. 
New York to Israel, not Israel to New York. Israel to New York is always longer. The winds are going against you. Fine, 11 and a half hours from Israel to New York. And what happens? You get to the airport, your flight's delayed a half hour. And we're like, <laughs> well, they just, you know, they just want to make sure a wing doesn't fall off at 35,000 feet. You know, is that okay? Yeah, yeah, but not more than a half hour. I got to, you know, I got I to gotta go. Yeah, is that, is that, we're, always, we're, we're advancing. We're, we, we became better from it. We became better people from it in any way, shape, or form. Now, now I'll tell you something, blow you away. Do you know that the Rav Tzadok from Lublin, this, this, I saw this the other day, I was, it, it blew me away. Rav Tzadok from Lublin says, you know, when we learn Torah, part of our job when we learn Torah is to innovate, what we call chiddish, right? To innovate, to come up with novel, novel ideas. A novel idea means that you've got a new understanding. That's what the Vilna Gaon says. If you learn a Tosos and you understood a Tosos and you got clarity in the Gemara that you didn't have before, that's a Chiddush. And the Reb Tzadok says, when we come up with wisdom in a base Medrash, when you're learning Torah, and that Torah creates a certain force of wisdom, that wisdom from the base Medrash then affects the non-Jews of the world, and their wisdom in innovations and in technology and in discovery, that's coming from our base vendors. We have unleashed that chachma. We've released that wisdom into the world. And they've taken that energy, the wisdom that we've released, now they've used it to make a new computer, to make a better whiskey, to make a better uh, medication. If Pfizer comes up with a medication, that's a result. We spoke about this the other day, right? That's a result of our, our learning in the base medrash. Why? Because we, well, we take the past and we use the past towards the future, as opposed to Esau. He's the chazer. He can't even turn to look towards the past. What else can't the pig do? He also has trouble looking upwards. The no-neck has trouble looking upwards. You like that no-neck business, huh? Yeah, Walt Williams. Remember that, boys. The no-neck. What does it mean Esau has trouble looking upwards? No fear of God. Esav has no fear of God. He's not looking up. Esav is only looking at one thing. He's looking at what's his next source of satisfaction and gratification. Do you know there's a source that says if you want to kill a pig, you blind him. Brought down in one of the forum says that if you blind a pig, that will enhance, that will, that will promote his death. What does he think that tells you? What does that tell you? What is a pig? What, you know, I never understood. I didn't know this. He used to talk about when we were teenagers, oh, he's, you know, pardon the expression, but, you know, when somebody goes, oh, let's go pig out, you know, that, that sort of thing. <coughs> or somebody was always in Yiddish, somebody who was a, a fresser, somebody who just, he's like, ah, chazer. No, no end to his appetite. And it's, physiologically, that's what pigs could eat, all, literally eat all day long. They eat and, they, and, they, and, they, and there's waste removal, and they eat and there's waste removal. That's what Esav is. There's no end to constant pursuit of his gratification. You blind him. If you blind Esav, what happens? Esav dies. What does that mean? He, he, no longer sees, he no longer sees what his pursuits are. So a person has to know, you know, well, we, we, we're used to thinking in terms of, it's Osir. It's Mutter. It's Osir. Skila. Our approach, like, oh, you know, look at that. It's an Aveira. A little, little from kids talk about, you can't do that, it's a Naveira. And, and that's how they talk, it's a Naveira. Don't think in terms, I mean, we have to, don't think in terms of usser or mutter as much as it's beneath our dignity or it's dignified. It's not, it's beneath my dignity. It's not that it's usser. It's not that it's usser. Not, that it's, not everything has to be forbidden. It's beneath my dignity. I told you, if he had a hoagie, is that what they're called, hoagies? What's a, uh, uh, yeah. what's a hoagie? A hoagie is one of the greatest sandwich developments. What is it, exactly? It's a loaded sandwich. A loaded sandwich. Right, okay, there we go. That's what I thought it was. What we call, I think, a sub sandwich. What do you call it, no, no, something? No, 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 no. A sub sandwich is not a hoagie. No, it's not a hoagie? It's a fundamental a hoagie is how bloated are you going to be out of it? Uh, there we go. A sub is how long you're going to make yeah. a look, at that, look, at how, look how enthusiastic he's getting. You know, uh, When I asked about Tosos, he wasn't talking like this, right? Yeah, no, we're talking about this is important stuff here. Yeah, this is what? 
the bread matters too. Well, obviously, the bread matters. You know, like I wouldn't think the bread doesn't matter. It's not, it's not just a trivial standby over there. What do you call it in South Africa? It's like a big, it's like a big, uh, like a baguette, a baguette stuffed basically with every every kosher animal that's made the supreme sacrifice to be on that in, in that sandwich. A baguette, okay. So you know, a hoagie. Uh, yeah, I got no problem with the hoagie. Uh, you know, I like to eat as much as the next guy. But at a certain point, at a certain point, you know, when you take this thing and it's about ye thick, and you got to get this wedge this into your mouth. You ever see somebody eating a hoagie? You ever see a snake swallowing a rodent? You ever see a snake? It's got a little mouth. The snake. And the next thing you know, the snake is doing like this, and the mouth, the jaws just open up like that till he gets him wrapped. Till he gets him wrapped around the rat, you know, and swallows him down, and you see the lump going through the snake's body. You ever see a guy watching a hoagie? Hi, I can't, can't. You get that mouth defies natural natural size, and it opens up to. Is it us, sir? Is it us, sir? Is that us, sir? Not forbidden. Forbidden. And I, I would say if you should, if a guy should eat them, eat them and enjoy them. What would you do if you walked into a room and you saw a Samet chowing down on a hoagie? And then what would you think? Applaud. You're like, like, well, you know, you know it kind of looks, it's kind of odd. Why? It's us, sir. It's beneath his dignity. I even tell people, if you need a falafel, or what do they call it, the big one, the, the one that looks like a wrapped oh, around, a shawarma, what's, the, the, what's it called? The, a laufa. You need a laufa. You got the, you got, what do you got? You got the Eiffel Tower stuffed with, you got the Eiffel Tower stuffed with, 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 with beef. So I tell people, if you need a falafel, I like falafel as much as the next guy. It, it, it cut it in half. If you eat a sandwich, cut the sandwich in half. You get just as much food. You, get, you, you know that statistically? If you take two slices of bread, you put peanut butter and jelly between them, then you cut it down the middle and you eat both halves, you got just as much as if you would have not cut it. Could you believe that? All research has indicated that. So, you know, what look, you know, something the guy eats a sandwich, I, it's, all, it's just all over the place. Eat a falafel, yeah. Cut it, take two half falafels. Take two half falafels and eat with dignity. It's not us or mutter. We can't look at everything as us or mutter. You have to look at it. Is this really who I want to be? Is this really who I am? Is this is this my is, is this what what I've been stri- what what my Yiddishkeit has brought me to us or mutter? Or is my Yiddishkeit trying to make me into an elevated person? Each person according to their level. But I, I, I want to become an elevated, more dignified person. Do you know that the Queen of England? They went at a royal at a royal meal in the in in, in at the, by the, with the Queen of England. When the Queen stops eating, you stop eating. That's a rule. When the Queen stops eating, you stop eating. I don't know. These people are starved to death. Who wants to go to a royal dinner? I mean, she's not. Probably in the back room, they got some hoagies for anybody who's still hungry. You know, you know, the ambassador from Australia. You know, he meets up with some parliament member. You know, like, hey, come on, you know, come on, Swen, let's go get, let's go nail a hoagie over there. But they, 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 it's beneath the dignity. That's 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 the idea. Okay. Um, take a look at Pasuk Tess, Yud uh, Tess, Yud Aleph Tess. Now we get to the fish. Um, <coughs> Pasuk <laughs> test. As that toch lo bikol asher by my also on page five ninety eight. This you may eat from what that which is in the water. Kol asher lo snapir vekaskeses. Anything that has uh, fins and scales by myim by yamim by nacholim osam tochedu. If it's got fins and scales, you can eat them. Now I heard from Rabbi Laufer. Rabbi Laufer, I always wondered about that. Why are those the kosher? First of all, if you ever look at fish, you ever look at fish with fins and scales. I, was look, I saw once a picture in a kid's book. They have various kosher fish, and then they have various non-kosher fish. The kosher fish all have a more or less uniform look to them. They all kind of, you know, they look fish-like. They just look like fish. Some are bigger, some are a slightly different color. Some have, but they all have a sort, sort of, when you see them laid out, they're kind of the same, more or less the same shape in the same color, in the same, the same form. You look at the, uh, they had the picture of all these non-kosher, he's got like a, a bullfish, and a, they, they look like ogres. Some of them look like ogres, you know, he's got the teeth sticking out there. They look like weird creature, an eel, all these weird things. They, they, you look at it, it's like, ooh, and he's just kind of like sleek, silvery, that sort of thing. So I always wonder, what is it about the fins and scales? Fins and scales are, 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 are what, what, what do you call it? That's a sign of a kosher fish. So, by the way, I don't know if you know this, do you know that dolphins 
fight off sh fight sharks. Do you know that? Dolphins fight. You know how they you know how they kill sharks? You know what they do? They torpedo themselves at the shark's fins, and they eventually they eventually they, they keep smashing themselves. They, tor they the kamikaze pilots they smash against the shark's fins till eventually because that's how they breathe. They take in water. Eventually the, the, the shark suffocates. They they smash the fins. They suffocate. Ask me how I know this, uh, Israel. Ask me how I know this. Yeah, yeah. My, how do you know this? Uh, good. Thank you. I thought you'd never ask. Yeah. My <laughs> my. Uh, my brother, who was going to be a zoologist, he knows animals like I know sports, right? Instead of and instead of being zoologist, they went and became a rebbe in a yeshiva. But he's a, but but he knew he knew the animal. What a waste of a childhood! He read all about it. He knows all about animals. Now sports, if that what it did, is a productive use of time, you know. <laughs> so so he told me he told, they 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 do that. The they, they 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 and I've seen you know you see videos. They, the, the 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 dolphins always fight the sharks and boom and they're 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 kind of torpedoing themselves. And they smash. What they're doing is they're, it's not just random hitting. They're they're smashing the fins so that they can't. Now, Rabbi Laufer said, "What is it about fins and scales? What do the scales do for a fish? Protect. They protect. What do the fins do? Air. The fins, the air. And what else do they do? They help propel. They move the fish. They propel the fish. So the sign of a kosher fish is on the one hand, your attitude is to propel yourself forward, to grow as a person, which we talk about all the time." On the other hand, in that uh, 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 state of growth, you have to be careful. You have to have the, you have the scales to protect. Make sure you're not going too fast. Make sure you're not taking on too much. Make sure you're not taking on too little. You know, that sort of thing. And therefore, those are the signs of the kosher fish. Talmidei chachamim are compared to fish. Why? It should be obvious. They swim against the current. Good. I like that. Fish do swim against the current, especially salmon. Kosher fish swim against the current? Yeah, they swim upstream. Salmon, salmon trout. Swim, uh, uh, trout also swims upstream. Interesting. It's very interesting because the comparison of Tamir Chachamim to fish is that fish are immersed in water. And Ein Ma'im El Torah. Torah is compared to water. Tamir Chacham, somebody who's immersed in the, in, in the Torah. And the, 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 even even the, 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 the Gemara is called Yam HaTalmud, the sea of the Talmud. You're in the deep waters. You're in the, you're in the waters of the Talmud. But it's very interesting because we also swim against the current. Fish, salmon, trout. They all swim against the current because we don't. Whatever the in the modern, whatever is in, whatever the isms are, and whatever whatever the world is, whatever whatever is, what's the word they use? Uh, what's um, whatever the new thing is? Trend? The trend. What's trending? That's the word. Well, what's trending? Right. We're we're not interested in trends. We're not, we're into, we'll go against it. We don't. We, it doesn't. It means nothing to us. And we swim again. It's very interesting, Dylan. And therefore, a Talmud Chachamim market compared to fish. I see them do that twice. What's that? I see them do that twice. They go against even the rest of the trade. <laughs> Don't laugh. You said the Hasidim were onto something. When the Hasidim, the Hasidim went to America, Raviol from Satmer, there was actually a, a differ, different approach. What do we do in America? How do we handle America? Jews came to America. Now, what are we going to do? How are we going to, right now, completely new? land with Nova. What, what are we going to do to protect ourselves? So there were two, there, there were two gedolim, and there were two different approaches. R Rav Aaron Cutler's approach was to create Torah. People have to learn Torah. The whole Lakewood Yeshiva and Lakewood satellites, that's a result of Rav Aaron Cutler. Rav Yol from Satmer, his approach was to create a self-contained community where we're not changing. Where, y y listen, let's face it. You see a chassid walking down the street, you see a Jew. And you see a, a litvak walking down the street, it depends. If he's wearing a hat, so generally you can tell he's either learning in kolol or he's a hitman with the mafia. Those are your two choices. But if he's not wearing a hat, he might be a businessman, especially if he's clean shaven. And he can't see the armor cover. A chassid, you can always tell. I don't know any goyim who walk around with strimals. Except in, except in what do you call it, maybe in, maybe in Russia in, in the winter, which is where the whole bin hood came from, because that's what they used to wear. It keeps you warm. I never understood how these guys in this weather, you ever see these guys come to shul on Shabbos or go to a tish, and they're wearing a spudic, you know, there were seven pounds of fur on their head at a, at a crowded tish with no air conditioning. Man, 
you know, for me. And then you wonder why I'm a Litvak. <laughs> I would never handle that. But they, they won't, they won't say that. And that's the old, that's a crown for them. A guy gets married, he puts on his first trimal. That's a, and it's, it, I got to tell you that some of them look pretty good. They're also expensive, right? But it's, a, it's, it's, a, there's a certain, it's regal. That's the Machabed Shabbos. A chassid walks into shul on Shabbos. This guy's taking Shabbos seriously. Look at the look at it. You know, he's got the he's got the. So we do also, but so but but that distinctive clothing that created a barrier for them, which they held out better than the Litvisha world in certain ways. The problem was, you know, when that barrier lost its efficiency, technology. Once technology came along, so the external barrier, the, there's no barrier. Now you got it in your house. You can wear a Strimal and have, have, an iPad, have, have a smartphone in your house so the technology of Strimal doesn't do any good. But it, it, it does have, it does have that, that, that lavouche, that clothing, does create a barrier. It creates a barrier. Okay. So <coughs> take a look at um, Pusuk, at Pusuk Yudtes. This is this is extremely important for us to, 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 to get this clear. There's an animal called a chasida. Pasuk yud tes. Ve'esa chasida. Oh, sorry, I skipped one. Pasuk tes zayin. Ve's bas hayana. There's some sort of creature. How does he translate it? No, he does. He transliterates it. Bas hayana. Bas hayana is some sort of non-kosher bird. And uh, uh, the commentaries say, why is it called a bas? What's bas mean? Daughter of the Yana. Why does it just call a Yana? They say, why Basa Yana? So I saw one of them before she says, the Yana mother, the meat is very tough. And one of the reasons the meat is tough is because it eats all sorts of weird stuff. It eats glass, it eats, uh, 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 what do you call it, camels, like camels eat fiberglass. Uh, they eat all sorts of weird stuff. Anyways, so the meat is very tough. It's only the daughter, the Basa Yana, where there might be a temptation because it's nice tender meat. Therefore, it starts telling you that's, that's not kosher. They had in the Guinness Book of World Records some guy, so you know, there was in the Guinness Book these weird people who eat different things. Some guy who ate a bicycle. I think he said the best part, the the the, the, the chain was the best part, you know. But a, a guy eats a bicycle, a guy eats light bulbs. They have these guys in the Guinness Book. They have these weird people. They have. I, we used to buy it for our kids. You know, our kids when they were young, they're they're, they're little Israeli. My kids are, you know, we're living in a from neighborhood, the kind of what you'd call sheltered. So we would get to buy once in a while, we'd buy the Guinness book. My wife would censor it to the wall out there. She'd cut out all the poopy pictures. Then we'd let our kids look at it, you know, the Hebrew and the kids. So there, there's one, there's one, uh, so you got these weird people. Usually they're from India. Uh, they're really weird people, you know, who, 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 who could do all sorts of weird things or they're structured, they look weird, they are weird. And then there was one guy who was, uh, he was Japanese. And what he would do is he's wearing flippers, like a swimmer's flippers, and he would jump out of an airplane, and another guy would drop an air, a parachute out of an airplane, out of a different airplane. And this guy, because he was wearing flippers, he is able to adjust himself in the air and move himself to meet the parachute, and then in midair take it and open it up. So we're once looking at this. It was really fast. I don't do that personally. I, 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 I you know, I, I, I'd much rather, you know, I much rather play risk, but uh, than take risks. But uh, uh, this guy was doing it, and and I remember my kids was once looking at one of my kids looking at the picture, and there's a guy standing on the wing of the plane, waiting to launch himself, and my kids looking at it, and he looked at him and goes, Abba, he goes, Daddy, who miss you got? <laughs> is the guy nuts? <laughs> I, I, I'd say so. By anybody, by any psychological standard, I'd say so. So you got this little basayana. Now look at Pasigya Tess. This is an extremely, extremely important concept, gentlemen. Extremely important. The Esa Chasida. Now a Chasida, he translates as, well, they translate it already. I think it's what we call, what's the big bird? A swan? But is swans not kosher? Not, not, is it a swan? I would that, say let's call it a stork. a stork. A stork. That's what it is. Thank you. Thank you. It's a st wow. Okay, so the, by the, the ostriches are weird. Ostriches are pretty weird creatures. It's a big bird. An ostrich is a big bird. Right? 
Yeah, you can ride an ostrich. Yeah, yeah, they, they, yeah they're pretty, they're pretty, the ostrich is pretty weird. They, oh, this is what? Oh, then there's a sparrow hawk, which my brother would be, if my brother was here, he'd tell you, oh, yeah, the sparrow hawk. And he could see a worm from, from you know, from, from six miles away. He could zoom, zoom in. And he know, I'm telling you, he knows the stuff. The Bikias is unbelievable. So, so, so he, he, a chasida is a stork. Now, look what Rashi says here. Very important. What does the word chasida sound like? Chesed. Chesed, Right? Let's get something clear, gentlemen. A chassid, a chassid is not the strimal. A chassid, the word chassid is a level. There's a tzaddik and there's a chassid. A chassid is a higher level than a tzaddik. A tzaddik does what he has to do. A chassid goes beyond the letter of the law. The Vilna Gon was referred to as Hagon HaChassid Mi Vilna. Now, he was not a chassidisher as we understand it because he was against the chassidim. He, re, he, 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 rege, he fought against the movement of Hasidus. But he was called the Hasid because of the level of piety and righteousness. Now, you have a bird called a Hasida. No, kind, no coincidences here. Why is he called a Hasida? Take a look at Rashi. Um, ha Hasida. It's five lines from the bottom in the right column. Zu daya levana. It's a white daya. I guess it's a stork. Vilama nikra shma chasida. Why is it called a chasida? Sheosa chasidusim chavrosa bimizonos. It shares its food with its companions. So it's called a chasida. Apparently, there's a certain type of bird that shares. Now, obviously, obviously, that's not a result of free choice. I told you, a guy once asked me, someone fell into water off the Gulf of Mexico. The guy said he fell into the water off the Gulf of Mexico, he was surrounded by sharks in the Gulf of Mexico. He fell off a boat, and he was surrounded by sharks, and a group of dolphins came, surrounded him. They beat the sharks away, and then they escorted him to dry land. That was a, it appeared in the news. So the, what he called, the guy asked me, do those dolphins get rewarded for saving his life? The Dolphin uh, Hatzola Committee. Do they do they get the, uh, the what are they called? It? The Shomrim. The Shomrim in New York. Like the Shomrim they call them. Right? Do the dolphin, they don't get reward because it's not, it's a it's an instinct. What they're doing, animals don't have free choice. It's not like, oh, you know, let's be good and save this guy. It's a, it's an instinct, number one. This bird, whatever it's doing, it's an instinct. It's not like the bird is just like, oh, he's so sweet. You know, he shares his food with, the, with those who don't have. But he, that's what he's called. He's called a chasida because of that tendency. What's the obvious question? If that's the case, why is he a non-kosher bird? Sounds to me like that should be the most kosher bird. Because he only helps his own kind? Oh, excellent, Ethan. Hear what he said? Because he only helps his own kind. Rashi says, chavroseh. He shares with his own kind. That means we have to get this very clear, gentlemen. There's a very big difference where we disagree with an ideology. We focus on not the people. That means the reform movement, we disagree with it. Catholicism, it's, it's a shaker. But if you saw a secular Jew on the, on the highway with a flat tire, you stop and you help him fix the flat tire. If you see a Catholic with a flat tire, you stop and you help him fix a flat tire. The person is not our, our, we're not against the person, we're against the ideology. We're against the distorted, the distortions, that's what we're against. And therefore the Torah says that, that the Hasidah is called a Hasidah for that reason. He's, he, he does chesed. Yeah, but we're, we're not, it's only not, it's not only that, you know, okay, litvax of the world, unite. You know, you know, we're, we're you know, we'll, we'll help anybody. We're, 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 what do you call it? We'll, you know, we don't. I may disagree with your approach. I told you the Vilna Gaon disagreed with the approach of Hasidus. He felt that it was a danger to Judaism to take the emphasis off of Torah study and put it into Kabbalah or these other things which most people didn't understand at the time anyway. That's why he was so vehemently opposed. But it doesn't mean that if he saw a Hasid with a flat tire or a flat wagon, as the case may be in those days, a flat horse, you know, you know he would help him. But, but, but there's, you always have to distinguish between that. We, we are not haters. 
We're not haters. Jews are not good haters, and we shouldn't be good haters. Sometimes you see these people going out and, and protesting in, in the, 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 this, this, this uh, certain, uh, 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 such, a, such a vehement protest. Uh, you know, if you vehemently invite people into your home, and you vehemently give tzedakah, and you vehemently, vehemently visit the sick, then you could go out there and vehemently protest. But why is it when it comes to protest and burning garbage pails and that's so all of a sudden they, they, all of a sudden your energies all of a sudden you're all enthusiastic about it? First, be enthusiastic about helping the downtrodden. If you help the downtrodden, then you know what you want to go burn a garbage pail or beat up a policeman. Go go right go right ahead, or beat up a leftist. Then go go right go right ahead. But until that point, you know you know they take that energy and put it into something a little more productive. Well, we're not we're not we're not meant to be haters. By Shon Rachmanim. Bishonim and Gomle Chasarim. Jews are three things. Bishonim, we have a sense of shame. Busha, we have a certain sense of shame. Rachmanim, we're merciful. Bishonim, we have a sense of shame. And Gomle Chasarim, we do Chesed. That's what we're supposed to do. I could not go out there and, 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 and make noise and beat people up. Rabbi, Unless they need beaten up. Yeah. Cormorant. Ducks draw fish from water. Yeah, but this is like, this is like they have the long beak. I mean, duck. You know, I, I think it's a cormorant. You never heard of a cormorant? No, but I know what pelicans are. Even I heard of a cormorant. There's a, there's a cormorant. So the, the bird that. I know fish. That's about. Yeah, fish, the, the bird. There's like a bird. It's this bird. Cormorant that kind of flies in, as opposed to a pelican, which is kind of in, in the the pelican is in so the water. Specifically, that kind of. Yeah, I don't know. That's hard to know exactly what what the what the, uh, a duck is. You know what the duck is and pull, pulling out big fish, right? What's the duck eating guppies or something? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's that's not you know that even I know even people who swallow goldfish. Okay. Uh, let's see what else have we got. <coughs> okay. One last point. Take a look at Memhe. All the way to the end of the parsha. And this is we we end with this. Mem hey and mem dal and mem hey. Page six oh six. Ki ani Hashem lo kechem v'iska deshtem v'isem kila. I'm Hashem your God. You should be. You know I don't like the way the word holy. Have you seen that's how people translate it? I don't like the word holy because holy sounds too holy. I like the word elevated. We're elevated. We are dignified. Yeah, holy sounds like ooh. You know we're walking around like you know. I, 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 it's got it's got. I just don't like that word. But that's what the Torah says. You should be elevated. Ki kadosh ani for I Hashem am holy. Velo setamu es nafsho sechem bechol sheretz hashoretz ha'ariz. Don't defile yourself with these creepy crawly creatures. Now, the, 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 first of all, I, was, I once went to, the first time I went to Australia, I've been to Australia twice. The first time I went to Australia, I had a layover in Hong Kong. So there was a, a, an older Jew who used to go fundraising in the Far East. So I told him that I went to Australia, I went to Hong Kong. He said, I had a layover in the airport. He said to me, did you travel around? Did you go sightseeing? I said, no. No, there was nothing I was interested in seeing in Hong Kong or anywhere else in the world, for that matter. Nothing I'm really interested in seeing. And uh, he said to me, oh, you missed it. In Hong Kong, they have what he calls Shuk Hashrutsim. They have an open air market where you could buy, like when you go to, you go to the, 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 one of these shops over here and you get cashews or candy, you know, you fill up a bag and you weigh it and you, you buy it. They have over there where you could get an open air market where you pick out various bugs and, and creepy crawly creatures. You know, you'll go over there, I'll take, uh, you know, 200 grams of those red stretchy ones and, uh, you know, I think a, a half a kilo of the, of the little creepers over there. And he said, it's fascinating. He's the guy, he's trying to convince me it's fascinating. And I got nothing to do but go look at a shuk hashratzim. Just what I'm interested in. You know, that, that, what do you call it? But that, that's what they did. They, they, that's what they do. The Torah says, don't defile yourself. It's beneath our dignity. It's Osir, and it's beneath us. And look at it. Last point. This is, this, this, will, this is it. This is it. This is the one we take away, gentlemen. Ki ani Hashem amala eschem me'eretz mitzrayim liyosachem lelokim. I am Hashem who brought you out of Egypt. V'yisem kedoshim ki kedoshani. You shall be holy. Take a look at Rashi. Right column, three lines from the bottom. I took you out of Mitzrayim. 
Al menas shetekablu mitzvosai helezi eschem. I took you out of Egypt I'm, in order that you fulfill my commands. And then he says, Tana de Bey Rebbe Shmuel, last line. Tana de Bey Rebbe Shmuel, we got this, 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 should, this should put it in a good mood for the weekend now. Tana de Bey Rebbe Shmuel, il mole lo elesi es Yisrael mitzrayim. Had I not taken us, them out of Egypt, elo bishvil shein metamim bishrotzim, had they only in condition that they don't eat creepy crawly creatures, dayom, that would be enough. Umal yusau legabayu, that would be a merit for the Jewish people. I tell you what, you have a tremendous merit, gentlemen. Don't eat shrotzim. Oh, twist my arm, man. Twist my arm. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, all right. I'll, I can I can live with that. I can live with that. So that would be a merit for us. So imagine how much of a merit you have when you have something that you really desire and you well, don't indulge. Imagine when you have something that you want to look at that you shouldn't look at and you don't look at it. Or you don't think it or you don't indulge in it or you don't eat it or you don't... Imagine if we get the merit, if we get the merit for, and then the Gemara says that, that if you don't eat blood, it's meritorious for you and all your future generations by not eating blood. Okay, well, I'll take that merit. Right? So the, the Gemara says, if not eating blood, which it really is not, I mean, between me and you, it's not like something like, like oh, boy, I'm missing out over here. I'm just not living. You know, it, 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 I, and so the Gemara says, so if you withhold, if we get rewarded for not eating blood, which means that you kosher the meat, where do you get that merit? When's the last time you had it? Do you know that you get a merit for not eating blood? Do you know when you get that merit? Every time you pay six times the price for kosher meat. Because part of what you're paying for is the labor involved in koshering the meat. Somebody had to kosher it. They salted it. If it's liver, they had to roast it out. They had to burn out. They, and you're paying extra money for that. Well, the money is the great equalizer here. That means you're, that means you're paying for the mitzvah. And if you get a merit for not eating blood, imagine the merit you get, the word says, Gezel and Arayos. Theft and immorality, which a person craves. Imagine the reward and the merit that you get for avoiding that. Chavez, everybody. Feel better. Thank you, Rabbi. Okay.